something that has come up for me a lot lately with talking to other people with Asperger's is social awkwardness of various kinds, with various little tics, and I'd like to address some of those now. And this is something that I'm seeing with a lot of Asperger's people, it's not just a couple, and just want to address some things, maybe some advice about those things, some things I did, things like that. Okay. And this is a letter someone wrote me, I'm kind of going to be looking at this for notes, but one thing is about people insulting each other, making little jabs at each other, and how someone may not be good at that. The thing about that is that there's, we lack spont spontaneity in conversation, is what they say in the books. Okay, people just are quick on the uptake, they just want to jab around, joke like this, do this with the other person. I've never, I've kind of gotten better at that, but it took time. I kind of needed to understand, like, the flow of the conversation and just how to move with it and not say something that would stop it or would get awkward. Um, one thing that I've done in the past is, like, ask about something that was talked about five minutes ago instead of moving with the conversation. And it's okay just to move with the conversation. And if something is important enough to maybe bring up later and say, hey, I wasn't done talking about this, you know, I might bring that up one-on-one -on -one with a person instead of in a group around people or something like that. And people tend to appreciate that because it's not really moving with the flow to bring up something that was talked about before. And that's one thing. But the other thing was, um, you're not getting mine and interrupting was one, but how to replicate that same process. We just want to just not just move with the flow, but just, you know, be able to listen and, and, and come and say things at the right moments. The thing is, is that I don't know how to joke joke, you know, with people. I mean, I do a little, but not, I don't know. I do, I do it in my way. Okay. It's something that I've learned for my, for me, but like I used to make jokes when I was younger and I stopped because no one would laugh. The thing about an Asperger's person is, uh, you know, we're really, really honest, and I don't know how to throw my voice much to make, like, something seem like not what you meant to say and then make a joke out of it. And so I I stopped doing that, like, pretty early on because I realized it wouldn't work. I can never throw someone off with my voice. So instead, what I would modify is just kind of just saying, saying something just because I felt like it, like something blunt or funny or silly or stupid or something, I'll just, I'll just say something just because I want to, uh, not because it's meant to be funny, because if it's meant to be funny, I don't want to laugh, because then it'll sound like it's meant to be funny, and it just not, doesn't work for me or maybe as for as people, but if I say something just because I want to, then it doesn't matter if nobody laughs, because I just wanted to say it, it doesn't matter, and that turns out okay, but, <laughs> um, anyway, but, Mechanics and social conversation, the, we're supposed to listen more than we're supposed to talk, but people don't really do that. You know, I listen a lot, and there's an expression that we have two ears and only one mouth because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we're supposed to talk, and I always grew up listening and observing, and that was helpful for me, but not everybody knows how to do that, but that's something that helped me, and then move with the flow of conversation a little bit. But, I know people, um, people mistake body language too, you know, like, I was told a lot when I was younger that I, I looked angry, I looked creepy, I didn't smile enough, you know, I, I didn't mean to do any of those things, you know, it, there was too much in my head, and when there's too much in your head and you're thinking too much, then it, it might seem like you're angry or sad or, or whatever, and, you know, we can't help that our brains are, are processing things differently. We hear all the sounds at once in a loud place. We, you know, we we have too many thoughts going through our heads like rapid fire. We that's why we think more than other people, and why or we might be a little serious looking when we're just thinking. We don't mean anything by it. We're just thinking. But another thing addressed, and uh, you know, this has been for me in my own life too, is that. You know, someone might think that you're angry or think that you're offended or your own family thinking that, you know, you're mean and stuff. And I, as people can be a little hard for neurotypicals and for other people to understand because 
we just kind of say things as they are. And I've been told that I am overly blunt and I've had to learn what kind of things people take personally, nicer ways to say things. You know, people can get defensive when what they need to be doing is explaining to them how this hurt me because of this. A nicer way to say this would be this. This hurts me because of this. You know, you got to be straightforward. You got to break things down and explain it to an Asperger's person instead of getting defensive, getting the person back kind of thing. You know, you got to explain why it is that something hurts them. And that's why I think family doesn't, didn't understand me, why family doesn't understand this person who wrote this letter. You know, people don't understand that kind of honesty, that kind of straightforwardness, how things are just black and white and, and Asperger's. We, we say things as they are. And so it's not that we're trying to be mean. Those that know us well, maybe we just don't know how else to say something. Maybe we just you know, get frustrating conversation a little bit sometimes too. I know that happens, especially if people aren't really taking the time to understand us. It, it can be frustrating. People aren't em empathizing, sympathizing, trying to, trying to get why our brains work a little bit differently. It can be frustrating and we might come off as mean. It even I've been told I'm mean when I didn't think I was mean at all, but you know, we don't always know how things sound. We don't always know how something we say is going to be taken. But that's another thing too with the social awkwardness and how, how things can come out wrong. So we got to be okay with being interrupted. You know, we don't like being interrupted. We, I know for me, I plan like five or 10 sentences in advance. I have my whole thought process going and it, it can be kind of frustrating when someone interrupts that. And one thing for an Asperger's person is that we, we can't have someone change the subject on us, like really abruptly, especially if we're really trying to talk about something important. You can't just change the subject just to something else randomly. I mean, that's just how conversation goes, but if something's really important to us and we're talking about, you can't just get defensive and change the subject to something else that's totally different. You know, especially if it's important, you want to listen to the Asperger's person. But anyway, so, we covered interrupting. How do, how do you inflect tonation? You know that you're still talking. I know that's a tough one. Talk to the person later. Um, well, I want to get back to this other thing I was talking about. You know, things like that. But anyway, but people like to dog on each other in conversation. If we're too sensitive for that, we just can't, we can't handle that. You know, if we just can't, we need to be able to just kind of turn off our feelings when we're, we're digging around with our friends a little bit. You know, this person wanted to know about sensitivity and conversation and making little digs at each other and stuff. You know, there's some things that I'm sensitive about and I have to let people know that I'm just, I'm just sensitive about it. And if we really don't care, we're not offended. If people think that we're offended, I guess just explain to them that however much you want to get into why our face is different, why our thoughts are different. Because this person wanted to express that they don't care when people think that we're mad, if that makes sense. But, and there's a couple other things this person didn't mention in the letter I wanted to address, but as we're people, we second guess ourselves a lot. Like, a lot. Um, I don't have this problem as much anymore, but I've seen this with other Asperger's people I've met where they will second guess so many things about what they're saying. They will say one thing and say, and apologize, and change their mind, and say a different thing. I used to have that problem a lot where I would kind of say something a little bit different than what I meant for that to come across, and then it would cause problems. You know, the things we're thinking and the things we're saying, the ways that it's taken, it doesn't always match up what we wanted it to. But I've gotten better than that lately, now that I'm 26, but I used to have that problem more. But people just, we just need to be more confident about what we're saying or think before we speak so that we make sure that it matches up right. That's one thing. But nervousness. Yeah, I used to be really nervous <laughs> talking, especially when I was younger, especially teens. It's like, it just felt like the world didn't make sense to me in a lot of ways. And, and, um, we've also apologized too much. Just thinking that we should apologize. Like we, apologize for our own behavior because we think that it doesn't work, it doesn't make sense, or we think we're making people uncomfortable, and I don't know, we just gotta be confident, we just gotta, we gotta not care if we offend someone a little bit, especially if we know that it was okay, but also try to put ourselves in the other people's shoes and not, 
not care too much for little things, but care for the bigger things and make sure that we're not making people too uncomfortable, you know, about some of the bigger things. If we wouldn't want someone to do that to us, then not do it. But also keep in mind, not everybody's as straightforward as, as us either. You know, things are gray. They're not always black and white. Sometimes people say something when they mean something a little bit different. we got to kind of read between the lines a little bit. Which uh, kind of brings me to the next thing. One thing that we could definitely do better to try to try to understand all these little ticks, these little nuances, and try to be better for the world, we need to do research, and not just like video research, but book research. Which, my one advice, you know, books are always coming out, but at this time, this is my book that I'm really recommending to people. House Rules by Jody Picoult has a main character that has Asperger's in it, and it is super informative, educated, it is very, very well thought out with lots and lots of stuff about Asperger's. And, you know, there's, what, five or six main characters in the book, and one of them, and maybe the biggest role, I don't remember, is Jacob, who has Asperger's. And you get to see things through his perspective, you get to see th on things through other people's perspective, get lots of examples, lots of little things he would say and do, and how it would be taken, and all throughout the book, I'm like, wow, I did that thing. Oh, wow, I did the thing. Oh, wow, that's what that looks like to somebody else. You know, it's it's very, very good. It's a very good experience. It's also on tape if people would rather do it that way. I kind of would like to listen to it on tape while reading it. It would be great. And I want to highlight it more, some of the good parts and stuff. But um, the other bit of advice, I'm always giving people when nobody wants to take it. Some people have to take martial arts boost their confidence. If I had known how helpful that was with confidence and, and having self-esteem and I needed that so much growing up, life would have been so much better and easier and I would have done so many more things in my younger years and stuff. I, I wish I had been doing it this whole time, you know, but I'm in it now and that's what counts. But as far as people need martial arts and not just for the fighting, but for the coordination for the confidence, for the group time, because we tend to like things one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, there's so many things that it's helpful for us. It's like a godsend to me. And school and sports doesn't really mix well with Asperger's, with with our nervousness, with bullying, getting on team with people we don't like. And then, like, I tried to do college football, but I had to switch schools because with my disabilities, I couldn't do well with the tests, so I had to discontinue that, even though I really, really liked it. But I had to switch schools and I had to move. You know, school and sports doesn't really mix for us, but martial arts is outside of that. So that's something we could definitely do, even if we suffer with school and have problems or have to switch or whatever else. But anyway, I know that was kind of all over the place, and I hope that that kind of helps <laughs> hit on some of the ticks with social nervousness. But I really hope that helps someone. Let me know if it does. And... Thank you.